Kameen. Let's move on to the business. Uh, Kami Knight is joining us here in the studio for that today. Uh, Kami, we've been talking a lot about the political um, crisis uh, unfolding in Bolivia after last week's attempted coup there. But as that political feud continues, people in the country are also uh, de uh, grappling, if you like, with a deepening economic crisis too. That's right. It's an economic crisis marked by a shortage of foreign currency, notably the US dollar, uh, caused by a drop in natural gas exports. In an attempt to counter this, Bolivia's president announced on Wednesday that the country has lifted its ban on cryptocurrencies. In place since 2014, that ban had prevented banks and individuals from conducting transactions in Bitcoin and other digital monies, part of a bid to protect the national currency, the Boliviana. Brian Quinn reports. In the grip of economic crisis, fuel lines and spiralling prices, the new normal. Bolivia is facing a severe shortage of the US dollars needed to import petrol and diesel. Foreign currency reserves have fallen from $15 billion a decade ago to less than $2 billion in May. They haven't disappeared entirely, but there are not many dollars. There is some activity, obviously, but not like before. When it came, we bought, we sold, but not anymore. Desperate for solutions, the government of President Luis Arce is looking to cryptocurrency to ease the pressure lifting a decade-old ban on transactions in digital money like Bitcoin. This is actually a global issue. Everyone is using that kind of payment. Why? Because it's an international strategy to move away from using the dollar. The central bank says the move is aimed at modernizing Bolivia's payment system and putting its policies more in line with the rest of Latin America. The region has seen a wider official acceptance of crypto in recent years, with its popularity growing in countries like Mexico and Brazil. El Salvador has even made Bitcoin legal tender, requiring companies to accept it for payments. Bolivia, meanwhile, is one of Latin America's poorest countries, despite sitting on large reserves of natural gas and lithium. Gas exports abroad, though, have cratered, in part due to a lack of investment in new exploration meaning fewer and fewer crucial U.S. dollars coming in. Brian Quinn there. Now other news, and Google's greenhouse gas emissions are skyrocketing. Yeah, so three years ago, Google set an ambitious plan to address climate change uh, by going net zero by 2030, but its latest environmental report shows it's nowhere near to meeting those goals. Google's emissions surged 48% compared to 2019 and increased 13% year over year in 2023. The tech giant says it's because of the energy needed by its data centers, exacerbated by the growth of artificial intelligence, and that its net zero emissions goals are now, quote, extremely ambitious. Google's report also reveals large global global disparities in the impacts of its data centers. Most of the ones in Europe and the Americas, for example, get the majority of their energy from carbon-free sources, unlike centers in the Middle East, Asia and Australia. Tech companies also make the case that AI is not just a negative force when it comes to climate change, uh, but that it's also helping to address it. Take a listen to this expert. We have to understand that if we are using more energy to do something, that energy, we want to push for it to come from renewable and low carbon sources as much as possible. But we also have to ask the question, what's the benefit we're getting from this data center or from this use of AI? Is it benefiting humanity? Is it making our lives better? Is it making our society more equitable? So it's just important to understand AI can be a force that increases emissions and AI can be a force that decreases emissions. It's up to us as humans to watch what we're doing it with it. And let's stay with the theme of emissions. General Motors are facing a pretty hefty fine. That's right. Federal, federal officials in the US say General Motors will have to pay a penalty of almost $146 million. It'll also have to forfeit emissions credits to settle allegations that nearly 6 million of its vehicles released more pollution than the car maker reported. The Environmental Protection Agency found some of their 2012 to 2018 model year vehicles were emitting more than 10% higher carbon dioxide on average than claimed by the company. GM has denied wrongdoing, but has agreed to pay the hefty fine. It comes as the White House finalized the toughest limit yet, limits yet on emissions from cars and light trucks back in March as part of an effort to speed up the country's transition to electric vehicles. Camille, thanks very much. Camille Knight there with the business news for us here on France 24. Going to bring you back to uh, France for this.